scroller or have done any work with the scroll saw in any way, you're probably aware that scroll projects vary in the amount of sanding that's needed and the amount of cutting that's needed. Some projects are cutting intensive. For example, this simple fretwork trivet, which has a relatively modest amount of holes, is essentially all cutting. When you're finished, assuming that you've done reasonably accurate cuts, the sanding is mostly a matter of removing the fuzzies and neatening up the outside. An example of a sanding intensive project is this six lobe bowl that I made, where of course there's cutting and cutting out the, the rings that then get stacked and glued. But once they're stacked and glued, then the real work begins as you sand and shape and sculpt the bowl. In many of my videos, I've focused heavily on the sanding aspect of my projects, since most people are more familiar with the cutting, the scrolling end of it, than the particular kinds of sanding that I do and the kind of sanders that I use. For example, the use of the drum sander for my blanks that I grew up and the use of the Buenavere series of small inflatable sanders that I use for my carving and sculpting. But I decided that it's time to talk about the scroll sort that I use since I take pride in the tools that I have in my shop and since I often get asked, what do you use or what do you recommend? I enjoy recommending tools that I found work. Now, when I first learned how to scroll, the saw that I used was the DeWalt 788, which is a workhorse and probably the best known of the mid-price scroll saws. The reason I used that scroll saw was that it was the one that the board bought for the community wood shop. I had to do a lot of arm twisting to convince them that the ancient craftsman pin type scroll saw was not really a scroll saw in any modern sense of the word. So this was the best I could do, and I did the bulb up with it. There was certainly nothing wrong with the saw. But when I came time to make my own shop, I decided that I wanted to buy tools once, and I wanted to move up to the next line of tools of scroll saws, which are known for superior cutting and absence of vibration. And as any of you who have done any work with tools know, the better the tool, the more you enjoy using it. One of the first quality tools that I bought was my little Starrett combination square, which is an almost obscene amount of money for a small tool, and I've never regretted it for a minute, because it doesn't wobble. The numbers stay because they're incised, and it does exactly what I wanted to do it invariably when I'm working I keep it in my apron and use it constantly. So that I've learned that buying cheap, they say cheap is dear, it sort of sounds like the kind of thing your grandmother might say, but it's as true today as it was in your grandmother's day. So when it came time to buy the scroll, so I asked around, I checked on the forum, I spoke to engineer scrollers whom I knew, who knew more about the technical end of the scroll saw, and I decided to go with a hanger. And I've never regretted it for one moment. Now, I must admit, when I first saw the saw up close, and I had never seen a hanger before, I decided to commit. I'd seen pictures, but as you probably know, it's very hard finding actual tools that are out for you to try unless you happen to know someone who owns one. And when I first saw it, I was struck by how little it looked. The DeWalt has a lot of sheet, I guess it's plastic, not even sheet metal, but a lot of coverings and things. Some of the other scroll saws have little stands to hold your blades and you know, all sorts of bells and whistles. And this was very, very plain looking. In some regards, it reminded me of the old craftsman, which had a tension adjustment in the back. I came to appreciate, however, 
that it's what you don't see, what, do, what does not jump out at you immediately is what makes this a superior sword. The absence of bells and whistles means that when you need to service it, you go directly to the parts. You don't have to unscrew pieces of plastic, decorative stuff. I remember for the DeWalt, we actually had to go out and buy a special screwdriver so we could even take the screws off because we didn't have the two sizes of star screwdrivers that you needed to do that. DeWalt also had very, very poor customer support. And I wanted a saw so where you could reach a person if you had trouble, and parts were easy to get, and you get help with troubleshooting. So those are some of the things that you don't see immediately that I valued. What I've come to appreciate is the solid cast iron construction of the main parts. So the saw, even not bolted down to the floor, is quite free of vibration, which they sometimes demonstrate by putting a glass of water on the saw table and seeing when you turn it on how much the water moves. The table itself, and I believe it's probably cast aluminum, but I wouldn't swear to it. I know it does not take a magnet, but stays dead on flat. So I never have to worry about any, any distortion making it difficult for me to work. And the arm, this arm is made of a lighter material, which apparently ensures its longevity. The only routine maintenance is the oiling of two little pivot points. And that's supposed to be done periodically. And that's about it. They've beefed it up recently with an improved dust collection system and replaced the little plastic tube with an articulated arm. This one's a little longer. I got the 18 inch, and this is the one that's meant for a 21 inch. One day I'll remove some of the extra pieces. I still have a little trouble figuring out exactly where it needs to be. But when it's on the mode for vacuuming up rather than blowing away, and I get it aimed in the right place, it just sucks that dust right up. And you may know that with any of the tools, the band saw is one of them where you kick up dust both above and below. The dust collection is much more complicated than when it all goes to one space as with my drum sander. It, that just sucks it up and there's, there's really no problem. And the lower part of the dust collection into which I attach my shop vac also works quite well. Not perfectly, but when I've compared it with and without being attached, there is a dramatic difference in the amount of sawdust that falls below. And for the relative lack of inconvenience, I mean, I did not build an elaborate structure some people have to catch all the dust, it really is, is quite satisfactory. I also was a little bit taken aback by the fact that to change a blade, you need a tool. The DeWalt has finger tightening, the knob is meant to be tightened with your fingers, or well, maybe your fingers, not my fingers. I never could get the blade to stay. And to be in a position where I'd have to call somebody over every time I had to change a blade or feed it up from the bottom is ridiculous. So I actually had to build my own little tool, my little adaptive device to let me tighten this. So what the hanger has is a clamp, it actually comes in three different sizes to accommodate normal blades, really thick blades. Like, for example, the bottom of my cupcake box is made using a number seven spiral blade, which is a monster of a blade, especially since it does not come with a flat end. So I use the larger clamp to hold it in place. And that goes in this little clamp holder, which is User-friendly once you get the hang of it. A bear until you do, but it's a relatively quick learning curve. You put that in, you slip the blade in upside down with the teeth facing to the right, and you tighten it. And if you're using two of them, if you're not particularly concerned about needing to undo it to feed it into a, an entry hole, you put the same kind of clamp on the other end of it, which gives you more positive holding and is kinder to the blade. However, for people like me who 
generally have to feed the blade through a hole. There's a quick release clamp, which actually does hold with the amount of pressure that I can exert and lets you undo this and get things buttoned up again relatively quickly. You also have a blade, a, ten, a tension release lever, which allows you to tension and detension the blade quickly, but the main tension is in the back, which is a little bit of a reach, but it lets you really adjust things very finely. One of the things that drove me nuts with the DeWalt was that at a certain point, the tightest tension was not tight at all. To get to it, there were rods and things and things to turn. It not only didn't work after we sent it out to be repaired by a so-called authorized technician, it was broken. And the, the head of it, the whole upper mechanism, which was supposed to stay down, went up by itself without an arm lift, and something was very, very wrong with it. And there was no way to fix it. I've also come to appreciate the insert in the table. I must say I hated it at first, because it meant that when you tilt the table, you had to turn the insert. And as you can see, if you don't turn the insert, the blade starts cutting its own little channel. So that was a minor inconvenience, but easily replaceable. And it means that you don't damage your table. On the DeWalt with the assorted people who used it in the shop, many of whom were not scrollers, you very often had big gouges cut into the opening of the table from people who pushed the blade into the table. And there was really nothing you could do because that was the table. It also made it easier to cut delicate pieces like these little sprinkles on my cupcake box. When you're cutting something very small, you need support. And the amount of support you get from a wide opening is simply not enough. On tools like the table saw, you would use a zero clearance insert, and you do the same thing with a hanger. Like zero clearance inserts for other tools, it comes as a blank into which you cut your opening so that when you have little pieces, they don't disappear into your dust collection system and fragile pieces are better supported. So that whenever that's an issue, I switch to the zero clearance insert, which works very well. And if you damage it, you can quickly replace it. So that works very nicely. But bottom line, the test of the scroll saw so really is how well does it cut. And on this count, I was very, very impressed. One of the things that was tough for me to do was to cut thick wood accurately. So if you make a box like this little blanket chest box, which means cutting through this wood is probably about an inch and a half or a little bit more, you want to cut nice and straight, which you can tell when you try to remove the piece, the insert, if you've cut straight, it just pops right out in either direction. If you haven't, it gets jammed in. If you've really done a botched job, it's been bowed and you may have ruined your piece. And I found that my ability to cut improved vastly. The lesser vibration, which gave me more control, and the ability to tension the blade exactly as I wanted it was invaluable. And when I say that overnight my skills increased dramatically, it's not an exaggeration. So unless I had elves in my wood shop overnight doing my work for me and correcting what I did, it was really, it was really quite a lovely experience. Another test of how well something cuts is when you're cutting something fidgety like plexiglass. On many projects where a nice edge is critical, I tend to cut it a little proud and then sand to the line, which is a common good practice. But you can't do that with plexiglass. What you need to do with plexiglass and also this, this little maze box for cutting the maze is cut right the first time. And it took me a little bit of practice to get the hang of it, but I found that 
I was able to cut very nice edges that did not look at all like, gee, they should have been sanded, but I couldn't sand them. And it just worked out so that what you save by cutting well is a lot of sanding time. And that holds true even for my sanding intense projects. The better cut my blank is, the less corrective sanding I have to do. So that all in all, like they say, you get what you pay for. Well, you say, okay, that's great. You know, you write articles, you publish books, you know, you can justify a good tool. Well, if you can't afford a decent tool, then you can't afford a decent tool, but you're better off buying or looking for a good used tool, particularly a tool like the Hegner, where parts and advice are readily available, than to buy a brand new shiny piece of crap. Because you won't be happy with it. It reminds me of the pair of roll of inline skates that I bought for myself many years ago, about 20 years ago, in Caldor, which is now defunct for good reason. They were $35. The skates I bought for my son were $100 and were real rollerblades. I figured, all right, let me start out. Let me not invest. I don't know if I'm going to like this. They were so poorly made that I could not even make it over to the playground to practice. And I was a good ice skater, so I knew it wasn't my ankles. It was the skates. They were garbage. And when I put on my son's skates, his foot was about the same size. I just glided right off. So that if you start with a scroll so that simply will not do what you want it to do, it's not going to be fun. You're better off saving up and waiting or buying used. And in general, if you do have the luxury of getting a better saw, it's wise to take advantage of it. You'll never regret having a good tool to work with. And eventually, if you want to sell it, it, there will be much more of a market. A good tool comes on the market and people grab for it. So that it just, I'm glad, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to work with the DeWalt, which was good enough to learn on, but also gave me a good sense of what I wanted and what I was missing. And that's really bottom line about it. The scroll saw, although it's dwarfed by the number of sanders in my shop, is the heart of the shop. And without it, I could, without a saw this good, I probably could not achieve the quality of work that I'm striving for. And uh, that's really about all I can say. I hope you found this helpful. And um, happy scrolling. <laughs>